Hey developers, today we're doing something a little different. We are going to listen to Ben Awad. He is a big time YouTuber, he talks a lot about React and he has tried Vue for the first time. So I'm gonna go and watch this video and do a little bit of a mini reaction for you guys. We're gonna pause it, I'm gonna show different clips of it. So yeah, uh, stay and watch till the end. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer, but I'm also really big into Vue.js, React, Node, Angular all the JavaScript framework. So I thought this would be fun to see someone else's perspective. So yeah, so let's let's jump into it. All right, so let's see, uh, let's see what Ben has to say. Today is the day you've been asking for it. I said it was gonna happen eventually. And I woke up this morning with purpose, with meaning in my life. I don't remember my dream, but it was probably a divine message from Evan Yu himself telling me today, Ben. Okay, if you guys don't know, Evan Yu is the creator of Vue.js, so. Obviously, that's a kind of a, a funny little joke if you know who created Vue. It's the day that you try Vue.js. And I can't say no to that, so here we are. So I'm excited to try Vue, because I've never ever used Vue at all. And we're gonna see how it stacks up. I'm now faced. Cool, yeah, so I mean, anybody who's starting with Vue is kind of in this position, like what to do, how do you get started? So I really like this idea. He's going to go ahead and Google how to get started with Vue. So let's see what he finds out and they have 3x and beta and i've been hearing people talk a little bit about 3x so uh right now Vue 3x is actually out it just was released last friday which is awesome um let's see what he chooses you know if i was him i would choose 3x beta but let's see what he does and i'm kind of tempted to just try 3x and see the latest and greatest from Vue. so hopefully this does not backfire Byte looks like the way to bootstrap our project Vue. Okay, so right here, I would say this is a mistake. Using uh, Vite, uh, I guess that's that's actually the way to pronounce it, is probably not the greatest way to learn Vue. I would say just stick with Vue CLI or using Vue using a CDN would probably be my suggestion for most people. But you know, let's see how it goes with 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 Ben here. Okay, let's see what we got here. Source app dot view. Uh oh, my view code is emo. Let's see if we can fix that. Maybe install an extension. Tax highlighting, let's go. Okay, we're good now. Okay, so perfect. I mean, he noticed right away that his VS code didn't have any syntax highlighting. So like one of the first things you do as a Vue developer is definitely look for some plugins and installations. I would also install Sarah Drasner's extension pack, uh, which actually has like two or three different Vue extensions in it. Uh, that's one I always use. But I mean, just definitely looking in the extensions in VS Code for Vue and looking for syntax is a good idea. Oh, look at that, hello world, counter example already done. I say done, but I just mean it's running now because I didn't actually make this yet. We're displaying a prop here. First thing I'm noticing is we do double curly brace, okay? Yeah, I mean, exactly, he's going through each part. Um, this is a great way to learn. Just look at the sample app. If, you hit, if he had used Vue CLI, he would have been able to see kind of the same thing. It does come with like a hello world type uh, component that you can kind of take a look at. So that's that's great as well. And then we're displaying our county. Okay, makes sense. This is a type. Messages of the type string. What is going on here? Is Vue using TypeScript or is this just the string object that it's going to make me pass a message in? Let's see. So, uh, I mean, I could answer that. Definitely people kind of get confused when they first see this. Props, that is actually a type message, but it's a way to, so when you pass props down, that you'll actually get errors in the console if the type that you pass down doesn't match the type that you kind of set inside your props. It has nothing to do with TypeScript, but sometimes, you know, it kind of looks like that, but it's not. You could also um, not just put in the, the name of it. You can actually put in some more defaults. You can put in, like, if it should be, uh, if it should be like a object and you can also put in if it should be a number um, you can do ranges you can do a whole bunch of things um, and make sure that when ping things are being passed down it it satisfies some certain requirement okay so here's us rendering hello world message and what happens if I don't listen to you and I make this message five what in the world and then it parses it out to be a non string at least maybe here, I think what I have to do is in my props, I say this is a number or something. And it yeah, exactly. So I mean, he's in the right idea. So you pass in the number, if you put the prop as a, a number, it'll pass in as a number. You can also um, do things where you're, the, whatever you're passing in, you can do a V bind to it, to an actual property, a data 
property and then pass it in that way. But obviously, um, as I said before, you're kind of cr this criteria is that it's a string, so you should pass in a string. So the answer was right in front of my face, but I just didn't read their little comment here. I have to use a V bind. That way it's a JavaScript expression. Yeah, so if he sets it using V bind, then it should work correctly. Let's see what, ha what he does here. So let's go back to our app. All right. Okay, I don't need to, I'm refreshing, but I don't think I need to. I think it just auto. Well, uh, he's using V, view CLI auto refreshes. I think V does too, um, depending on how you set it up. Yep. Does its thing. So what happens if I make this a string now? What was that doing? I feel like that was just prop types. I'm gonna open up the console here. Yeah, okay, that's just their version of prop types. Yeah, so I'm not a huge um, React, but exactly, you could see since he's passing in a number, but it's actually expecting a string, then you have the warning inside the console, like I said earlier. Invalid prop, gotcha. Okay, so that's useless. Okay, okay, two-way binding, not bad. I don't know if that's useless per se, but I think most good developers would be checking their console. I don't know, Ben. I'll do for loops, v4. Why am I coding everything with strings? This feels weird. Yeah, so if you're in the view ecosystem, yep, you are using those strings there. Yep, that that happens. So what I'm wondering now is with this, if I integrate their TypeScript support, because I know you can use TypeScript with Vue, at least I think you can, is how much like IntelliSense and stuff can we get with these weird string things? Add script lang ts, <laughs> and I have to get the vture extension define component. Okay, so now we got some language support things. Got some linting. We, I don't have a to-do.id. Okay, that allows it. I wonder if there's something else I have to config for that. So I made it to the end of the TypeScript docs and I didn't see anything about types for in the HTML bit up here, which makes me kind of sad if they don't have it, but I'm getting. Okay, so what he's saying here is that he's not getting the types inside his, he, he actually switched this component over to TypeScript and now he's not getting types inside his template. There is a Vtor extension. There's actually a setting inside that extension that allows you to do types inside your, in templates. Um, so he just doesn't have that turned on. So that's why it's not working. So it does exist. Guessing I just probably missed it somewhere. Well, hopefully there is a view expert watching this video that may know how to do this. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to live my life with 80% TypeScript support, and maybe that's okay, but it just makes me like a little bit sad. Well, uh, don't worry, it's don't. he doesn't have to be sad. I mean, obviously it does exist, so that's good. Is there not a way to get TypeScript to infer that this is an event type? I guess there's not a way in view, that's kind of sad. But maybe you could set the type on the on submit itself. It, maybe not necessarily having inferred, but you could set it. Maybe there is. I mean, I'm just a view noob. What do I know? I don't know what this type is. Well, I know what this type is now. Just some vanilla. <laughs> so I, I, as for that, I mean, yeah, you can define it. I don't know. In fact, I don't know with TypeScript support on there if that works. I'm just typing the word class. Feels very weird. Feels very weird that that's not there. Yeah, we don't, yeah, Vue doesn't use class name like React, so that's a little different. With Vue offering a more intuitive API and improved development experience. Shots fired at Redux, but I'm glad it's more intuitive and a cleaner API, let's see it. I started doing the Vuex getting started and I copied this from their docs and I tried importing use from Vue and it didn't exist for some reason. I hovered over it, it says no exported member. So I was like, huh, that's weird. I'll just go Google it. And I figured it had to do something to do with Vue 3 because I'm using the beta or something, right? And I see all these articles talking about how you might not need Vue X with Vue 3. And I was like, hmm, you know what? This sounds really familiar. Yeah, so in Vue, in Vue 3, you have the composition API. So there are ways that you can like use inject and provide. And there's also other libraries that you can use with the composition API to kind of create a poor man's store. So you don't need to use Vue X. I personally think you should keep on using Vue X with Vue 3. But you know, there's a lot of articles saying maybe you don't need it. I mean, it just depends on what you're using. Uh, I, I actually did a video a little while back on Pinya and it was a really cool store not using Vue X. And it works with Vue 3.
UX, I'm just gonna use the cool View 3 reactive stuff. This reminds me of MobX, but kind of even cleaner than MobX, because you don't have to wrap your components in like observer things. So you can create reactive variables like MobX or create- Oh yeah, and that's another good thing. You could like use reactive variables too, um, and not use Vuex, but you know, I'll have to do a video on that. It's a little complicated. Okay, that's probably enough Vue.js for one day. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Probably my biggest gripe would be with TypeScript and not getting like TypeScript things in the HTML template part. Which as we said before, we know that that's just a configuration issue. And like not for prop names, like I want it to tell me when I misspell a prop or something like that, which may even exist. They might have some kind of linting for that and it just, I'm just a noob and I don't know about it yet. And also like TypeScript inference would be nice for these things. But other than that, it was pretty nice. Like I can nitpick a little bit if I really want to. Like it felt a little bit weird to like write a string, right? But you could say the same thing. You know, they probably say it's weird to do curly braces like that if they're coming from or going to react. And then also like, this is like a small thing. This was weirding me out. Why are they the same color? You know, once again, I, th I think that's probably just like a setting. I bet you can install some extensions to make things different colors. I, I don't know why it's not all the same color. Maybe it's a part of using V. I don't know. But anyway, I did like it and the API is very clean. I enjoyed like how little boilerplate there was. I really enjoyed just mutating stuff. Vue is definitely on par with Svelte for me. They felt very similar, but I've only really done the basics of both. And I'll probably develop a preference for one or the other after spending a little bit more time with each. But uh, just between you and me, React is still the king. So, I mean, that that's it. That <laughs> It's kind of funny. He, he still gave a little jab there at the end. But, you know, it's I think it's personal preference. And I like how he was able to dive in and understand the view concepts really easily. And that's what's a really good thing about Vue is you can get up and running super duper quickly. And I think that Ben saw that through that through this whole video, how easily it was to get up and running. Uh, you know, other than maybe some configurations on his syntax and his IDE and maybe making sure he gets his types in his in his uh, template, I think he had a pretty good experience and I think everything worked really well. Uh, you know, I think that he really understood the concepts pretty well. And I would have really liked if he would have jumped into Vuex a little bit more. Uh, like I said, I think it's still well worth using. It's not something you have to use. All right, so well, that's all I got today, I guess. If you guys like these type of videos, leave a comment below and let me know. You know, it was really cool that, that Ben got to choose Vue and uh, appreciate his opinion on it. Thanks.